All right, welcome back. Uh, so today we're going to talk about a couple new acquisitions and a little, I guess, a little of my thoughts on on the steel that it involves. Um, so we're going to talk about this guy here. This is ooh, failed. Uh, an olive and black Kershaw knockout. Um, I had actually kind of been holding out for the LMAX version. But then my local knife store had a great, like a really, really great sale. And uh, you know what I like better than LMAX? 20% off. So, yeah. We get <laughs> we get into uh, this thing. And it's, gosh, look at this. It's, we got, uh, you know, these aluminum handles on it. And it is, it's actually really thin. It's actually, I would say it's slightly thinner than than a cryo 2 or you know anything else in that sort of thickness category um we get this nice uh, space backspacer here uh we're you know another stop pin and we're on the subframe design that's why they call it the knockout because they, they knock out this bit then they knocked out that bit and yada 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 we have a a liner lock or i guess subframe lock they call it same deal you know locks up okay it's pretty shallow right now. Should wear in a little bit. Um, it is like it is also really new. I just haven't used it at all. Um, and you know, part of that is the same problem of it would scratch everything in my pocket, and I just don't. I have too many knives already. <laughs> what can I say? This is a problem. We meet up. On, we meet up on Tuesdays. Uh, anyway, uh, here's here's the real beauty of this knife. It's very deep and it's like kind of very it's very full belly you know um and you'd think it'd be like one of those um oh my goodness it's such a brute kind of nice but when you get into it it's very thin now the stock is not exceptionally thin the handle like the, the overall width of it in your hand uh, especially given how deep it is is pretty thin um for so for comfort wise it's a little different and Blah blah blah. That's that's up to you. Um, the shape doesn't offend me at all, and you know the texture's all right. The real beauty of this is the blade. It's uh, Kershaw standard that uh, 14C28N, and so that's you know that Sandvik nitrogen steel, and you know whatever you want to say about nitrides versus carbides. Uh, it's designed to originally, I guess, to be or in its heritage was designed to be razor steel. Um, now, if we know anything about straight razors, if I, if my neck knows anything about straight razors, my face, uh, which it does, um, razors are very thin. They're very, very sharp angles. And that's one of the things that you, when I hear somebody say, oh, surgical stainless steel. Yeah, no, just no. Surgical anything. Uh, that's actually one of my pet peeves is that surgical steel means it only has to be sharp once then they take it away sterilize it then throw it away or recycle it like remelt it back into steel uh, you can take anything and have it really really thin and put the tiniest shallowest or shallowest I don't know you know tallest edge on it and it'll be super sharp once but here we get into this knife and at first glance, you know, it looks like it has the standard Kershaw grind on it, but if you look very closely, it doesn't. It's missing that sort of full full stock thickness right here. And this is the beauty of this knife, is that it's, because it's so tall, it's actually ground, you know, very, only the slightest bit shallow. It's mostly flat. Um, it's very close to flat, anyway. And that gives you steepest angle that you would probably want on a production knife so basically what happens is you have a razor steel and you know the ability to put really really long angles on it so what does that give you well uh, out the factory this is the sharpest knife I've ever received out of the factory and it rivals the factory edge rivals anything that I can put on it to be quite honest um, I could do it better, you know, case by case, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I can do higher polish, whatever. This 
is as sharp as probably I would ever want anything to be. Now that's probably a function of, again, you know, your your angles on it, right? Now, long term, do you really want that? Is that extracting the best performance out of this, you know, steel? Who knows? And I'm probably not going to find out for a while. So conversely, um, the sale was extended and we got this. Uh, again, I was holding out for a an LMAX blur or maybe the tan one or, you know, flipping S30 blur. Um, but, you know, they they got one. I was there when they unboxed, or they, yeah, they pulled it out of the box, and I said, oh, you know what I like more than LMAX? 20% off. So we have, in a very short span of time, two samples of 14C28N to, to play with. Now this one is very pretty, obviously. It's anodized blue aluminum. We got the, the insert that's actually not that bad. And, um, you know, we got the, the old school, old school at this point. Uh, cannot need design. Uh, there's no flipper on it, which would actually make for a great knife on a blur would be a flipper, but That's besides the point. Um, I bought this mostly to look at uh, and it, it doesn't seem that way because we've got the the stonewash stonewash. Yeah finish on the, the blade instead of my my standard DLC uh, fetish that I've got but the main comparison I want to bring up by looking at these two knives side by side is kind of a geometry problem. Now this, same steel presumably, same you know plant, same everything, just different grind. Actually the craziest thing about this is that the stock is actually this more or less the same uh, width to begin with, right? So we get the same stock and but we get to see what happens when you, very very easily, what happens when you play with the angles a little bit. So this is much deeper. This is not that much deeper, but it's, you know, effectively deeper. Uh, the grind is much steeper, and your, your primary bevel is a little bit steeper. And the difference is, because both of these came straight from the factory, more or less, um, without any interference before I got, and I'm pretty much, yeah, it was pretty much me just first person to interfere with it. This was not, this is, it was not and still not very sharp. Uh, in comparison to the knockout, it's, it's it, almost, you know, mind-bogglingly different. And I can see why some people would have a negative, or per, have a negative perception of the steel in this geometry. Uh, this is fully, fully hollow grind. With that, the the beginnings of that Kershaw standard grind, where you have full thickness here, and the removal on the top, right? And this is about as you know as old, I guess. Very, you know, a very typical, stereotypical, almost you know the Kershaw knife geometry, and that's the problem. Where we have the with the hollow grind, you would think that it's very narrow behind it is also it's very narrow behind the bevel but you know we have the primary problem of this being the primary bevel not being uh, steep enough and again we have we run into the problem of this hollow grind is actually pretty dramatic if I don't know if you can see that but it's actually pretty dramatic and it again we're having we're gonna run into the problems of you know full depth cutting where it's just gonna get hung up there and yeah um as far as that goes, I mean, the blur is a successful knife. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. There's no reason for them to have 18 bajillion versions of it unless it was popular. So they're do they're clearly doing something right. Um, but it's not the geometry, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's I just can't get it sharp as as like re like r truly ridiculously sharp. That this knockout can do, and that's that's about as sharp as as I can make anything, um, even down to the point whatever point two point one micron finish that I put on uh, something else, um, my my uh, three fifty. That's about as that knockout is about as sharp as I can get anything, and this one I spent I don't know probably a good hour just 
you know, on the on the ultra fine stones and putting pass pass after pass, and it's still not. This is kind of disappointing, actually. I wonder if it's a to the point where I wonder if it's a steel problem, but it like it shouldn't be. These are these are very close production in terms of time, like a couple of weeks, as far as I know. And same steel, same factory, same yada yada yada. And I can go on about this forever, but here we get into the the full discussion of you know what makes steel good is it the steel or is it the geometry and this was i guess a throwback to the era where the geometry wasn't a big deal or not as big of a deal if at all um now that is again secondary to the purpose of it, it looks really pretty so that's why i bought it and it well i mean i bought it because it was on sale but you know it looks really pretty and so it really doesn't serve much of a purpose for me to you know talk on about that forever and, um, you know, as a side project, I will work on it as much as I can and as much time as I have to, to get on it. And maybe it'll come around because I, I clearly see the potential of it here. This is, this is truly ridiculously sharp. And it took so little effort to get it, you know, I dulled it a little bit to begin with. And it took so little effort to get it back to absolute peak sharpness. Um... And so we're left with, you know, uh, green versus blue here. And I'm really thinking that, that green's winning this time. Or, you know, I think the, um, the other obvious answer is that uh, it's clearly the DLC coding that makes everything sharper. But, what do you know? Anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's about all I can blabble on about, about these two knives for now. See you later.